Hello everybody and welcome back to the Dream Team Tonic podcast episode 23 on this Sunday evening. I've just been woken up uh, after falling asleep during the Arsenal and Notts Forest FA Cup game. <laughs> what a horrendous game of football. Um, but yeah, so we we'll woke up with a start. Um, thanks everyone who's joined our Patreon. Um, we appreciate your support. Again, if you're interested in joining our Patreon, um, patreon.com forward slash Dream Team Tonic. Get yourself some extras there. Get involved in the great community we've got going. Um, there's some some cracky stuff on there and uh, some great advice from the lads. Um, with me, Tony, as usual, is Ben. Are you there, Ben? How are you doing? All good, mate. Now I'm awake. How are you doing? Are you there, James? I'm here, Tony. Happy days. Um, let's get cooking then, lads. We've, um, we've got uh, an after-hours show to record tonight as well for... For the Patreon members, um, which is always a good laugh, uh, full of more booze. Um, <laughs> let's see if I can get get up for work tomorrow. Um, right, James, you're first up today. Uh, let's have a look how your team's done and your transfers and and so forth. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> uh, on Saturday I brought in Lukaku, and uh, today I brought in Bowen. So uh, sorry, I should say. If, um, Lukaku for Salah and uh, Bowen for Sancho. Can't, oh, I've been waiting for a long time to get rid of Sancho. He's done, <laughs> <laughs> he's done absolutely nothing. I think he got one goal and then he, he's, he's just been a disaster ever since. So quite happy to get rid of him. I think that, uh, got, I think that got chopped off for an assist in the end. It was an own goal in the end, that goal. Sancho it, yeah, do, yeah, do you know what? It did end up as an own goal, that actually, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. So he got an assist mm. instead. Yeah. So uh, yeah, forty-two <clears throat> points so far. Um, I'm quite happy with that. I don't. I think that's. I'm. So I haven't looked at your guys' team yet, but I imagine forty-two is not doing too badly. Um, we've got zero from my defence because um, uh, Edison didn't play, uh, Trent didn't play, Robertson got zero, Alonso got zero. But my for once, my midfield has been the thing that's uh, that's um, boosted me up. So. 13 points from Bowen, get in. Uh, wow. Eight points from Silva, five points from De Bruyne, uh, eight points from Mora. Um, and up front, I got eight points from uh, Lukaku with Ronaldo still to play. Uh, Jota didn't come on today, unfortunately. He wasn't in the squad, which is a tiny bit concerning. Mm-hmm. But we're, I'm hoping he's just rested. I haven't heard anything. Hopefully, he's not one of yeah. these uh, COVID <laughs> effective players. Yeah. What about what about Trent? The Trent rumours. Oh, well, it's been said on the official website that he's got co- possibility. Yeah, of he has got COVID. Yeah, that's that's um that came out direct from Liverpool. So um, mm. yeah, we think we can take that as red. He's got COVID. Don't know how long he's out for. Um, they were sort of implying we'd be back in the coming days, which makes it makes it doesn't sound like very long then, does it? But mm. it could be like ten days, couldn't it? Yeah, so, depending, we need to keep an eye on that. Trying to trying to find out when did he um, when did he test positive? Mm. <laughs> It'd be uh, <laughs> yeah. it'd be handy to know that, wouldn't it? But <laughs> who'd have thought we'd all become armchair epidemiologists <laughs> <laughs> as well as fantasy football um, followers? <laughs> That's it. Spreading our wings, got to, got to. Oh, you forgot to say on Friday I did um, Mares to De Bruyne. So yeah, all three transfers were. Uh, Got me points, so we're happy with that. Yeah, you've got to be happy, aren't you, when you bring them in and they get you a few points. Yeah. Especially if they're not going to be playing Mares, Salah, you have to get rid of them anyway. Yeah. Because they have come. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, best best team's 35th. Um, no transfers there. I was getting a bit... Thank you. Go on, James. Uh, <laughs> I was getting a bit bit twitchy on the... On Saturday, though, when uh, Lukaku was starting, and uh, I was thinking, oh, God, because I brought in Kane last month in, in preparation for yeah. Salah, and I got rid of Mares as well um, uh, for Mora. So yesterday I was like, oh, God, have I made a cock up? Maybe I should have brought in Madison, should have brought in Lukaku. But I thought, no, stick to the plan. And um, yeah. yeah, I d- dropped down to like 50th, but today I'm back up. So um, no transfers made. So. In a good position to uh, attack, you know, attack the rest of the month and February. Definitely, I, I say it's a short month this month, isn't it? I think 
at the weekend, finishing 23rd of January. It's done. So he's got two weeks left. You've got five yeah. transfers in that top side. Mm. So you, you've definitely uh, got a bit of a head start, I, I presume. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to look into that on the After Hours pod, I think, aren't we? We're going to delve into yeah. a few details of the top lot, um, which you're well in the mix of, James. And yeah, you, you do, you're doing good. There's a, there's a few few lads in the uh, Patreon group as well. I think Andy Barnett's got quite a high up team as well. We're all, we've all got some knocking around up there, but not as quite as high as you. So we're uh, we're all rooting for you, man. Um, yeah. Right, let's jump over to my side then. Yeah, forty two points. Forty. I've, I've hit forty five this week. I think that's probably a, a, a decent score. I think, and it's always good to see when, like you say, when you make your transfers that your player actually that you put in does a little bit for you because how many times it goes the other way. <laughs> Um, but we was barking on a lot on the last pod about Bowen, Madison um, and the likes. So it's good to see them come straight in and do a bit. Um, so I've still got Mendy sat in my side. Uh, I, you know, I've, I've used four transfers and I've still got Mendy sat there. <laughs> Is my last transfer going to be on Mendy? I very much doubt it. He's got COVID now. Did you know that? Has he? <laughs> yeah. He, he might get an early play in home then. <laughs> well, I don't know. There's a, suppose there's a chance, but uh, he's not going to be playing in the Afcon for ten days, I guess, or because he's just been diagnosed. Right, hopefully they send him home and he can do his recovery at Chelsea and he's back in line. But yeah, I'm not. I don't think I'll be using my last transfer for a goalkeeper when the ceilings are very low. Um, Rudiger zero, uh, Diaz zero, Cancelo got seven rating for three points. That that um that city clean sheet white power a little bit harsh, <laughs> um not what you want to see really, uh but yeah it happened. Um, De Bruyne who I transferred in five points, uh, Bowen a transfer in star man goal thirteen points, great great last minute uh, goal there, that, uh giving probably ten points more didn't it? I think he was sat on three at the time. Um, Madison. Um, eight points. We go. Uh, Bernardo Silva, eight points. Um, Lukaku, another transfer in, eight points, which could have been so, so, so much more. Um, anybody who didn't transfer him in, you've got some big bollocks because <laughs> I'd, I'd have been sweating, sweating knowing Lukaku were lining up against Chesterfield, but mm. it wasn't to be. It wasn't to be any more than just a goal. Um, Lacazette. Who came on for Arsenal in that boar fest then? Um, zero, uh, which is crazy because Arsenal were absolute. They were brilliant. They were brilliant over week. They looked a proper proper team, and then I do you know I, I I I would just pass it off as a bad day because Forest did sit back quite a lot and um, and played up break. I think they just struggled to break them down. Arsenal there was some a lot of misplaced passes. A lot of it was, it was scrappy. It was, it was crap. Um, but I'll give them a benefit of doubt. Um, so Arsenal are like one week they're world beaters, and the next week, next week they're panel beaters, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, man. It's true. Hopefully, hopefully get a response midweek against Liverpool. Um, I'd like to see some goals in that game with this team. Obviously, we have him like that, and then Yotu, who obviously didn't get on. Hopefully, he's not got COVID and he was just rested for midweek, and they'll play in the semi final, but. Yeah, there I'm at, 45 points. Um, it's not going to be better teams, this, to be honest. The pod team, it's it struggled a little bit. I did get stuck with a few players I've not wanted, but I can see that team doing all right for ne- for, for, uh, for next month. So it might might catch up a little bit. The best side has actually climbed up today, which is weirdly enough for uh, Connor, who does our blogs um, on the Dream Team Tonic website. Um, he, he posted in earlier about it being 838th. And I was thinking, that, that sounds a bit, a bit familiar, that, Connor. And my best team's in 838th as well. So we're actually tying me and Connor uh, running side by side uh, in mm-hmm. the best side, which still has a few transfers left. But I did make the Madison uh, Madison move and De Bruyne move in that team as well. So one transfer left in this side. Like I say, I probably won't use it for Mendy. Um, yeah, set up all right for, for the rest of the month. Over to you, Ben. Yeah, mate. 
Um, I finally joined the party. I'm uh, got two teams in the top one k now. I just want to put that in there. <laughs> happy, happy days, man. Well done, mate. Good yeah, stuff. one team's gone up to 549th now. Good Shut stuff, up. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know if everyone was sleeping this weekend or what, but I've got right <laughs> up there this this month. And James he, was. I, yeah, <laughs> James was. <laughs> yeah, but during the Leicester game. <laughs> yeah. I woke up 10 minutes before the uh, Leicester game started and I thought <coughs> I'm, I wasn't in a state to uh, to make any transfers so I thought no I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make a rash decision and then I, and then I thought oh do you know what Madison could be an option and I thought no I'm not gonna do it when I'm half asleep so uh, yeah I didn't make any transfers in my best team and to be fair I don't think um, as things panned out I mean uh, yeah the, every team seems to I don't think anyone's got a brace this week, have they? Every every team's got different different scorers. Even yeah. Man City have five different scorers. Mm. Um, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I was I was thinking there was going to be a couple of braces or hat tricks this weekend, but it hasn't yeah. panned out like that. Mm. Um, so I'm gonna say, uh, yeah, you sh- you should uh, set start setting your alarms when these big games are on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I have done that before, but uh, yeah, I should do. <laughs> um, yeah, so this team now uh, is just inside the two, 2K now. Uh, 48 points this week. Uh, 12, 30, 1,230 points in total. Um, I've made three changes. So I've got rid of Foden for Madison. He got me eight points. Uh, got rid of Mane for Lukaku. Soon as seeing him in the starting line against Chelsea, I thought, ah, oh, he's gonna fill, fill it. Fill, how do you say it? Fill. Can't fill his fill, boots. Fill his boots. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he's gonna fill his boots here, and he's obviously got more fixtures than most of the other teams until next month. So I thought, oh, I've got to, mm-hmm. got to go for this. Like he might get two or three. Well, he got to, taken off at half time, so but he's still got extra fixtures, so. It's all right. Um, Trent, I took him out. I didn't want to take him out, but when I seen that he had COVID and I wanted Liverpool defender in there because they've got, the, in my opinion, the best fixtures this month. So I put Van Dijk in there for Trent. Um, he got three points after a, the stupid goal that they conceded. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. Bloody ooh. Oh, scored the goal. <laughs> well, this time last year we drew two two with them, so uh, I wasn't expecting a clean sheet. Uh, to be fair, uh, you were a bit unlucky with Van Dyke because um, he had a really couple of really close headers. Yeah, he could have scored today. Yeah. He's not been scoring many this season, has he? Well, that's that's another reason no. why I've put him in because I think he hasn't gone off yet. He's got one mm. goal and he hasn't even had a star man yet. So He's I'm a thinking... monster in the box, so he will yeah. get some goals this year. He's got it, hasn't he? Yeah, mm. and and he's the sixth highest best defender in the game points wise, hundred points. I just thought he's going to go off at some point, and with the fixture count for Liverpool, I thought it's a good time to bring him in. Yeah. Uh, so Trent, uh, obviously Trent went. So Edison didn't play. Um, Rudiger should play on Wednesday in the cup. Cancelo three points, Madison Silva eight points, De Bruyne five points, Bowen Starman for West Ham again, got a goal at the end. Uh, Ronaldo to play, uh, Jota didn't play today but should play on Thursday, and Lukaku got eight and should play on Wednesday. So still plenty of plenty of uh, football to play this week. So could could be a good score at the end of that. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I say, hopefully then there's no more uh, complications around the games because obviously we just heard, haven't we, just before the pod, um, the Leicester game's been cancelled midweek. Yeah. Which, you know, when when you when you have a heavy night and you fall asleep and you miss the Leicester game and bring in Madison in for the mm. double game week, then <laughs> it, sometimes <laughs> it plays to your advantage to have a heavy night, doesn't it, James? Yeah. It does. I, I got away with that one. To be fair, got well, yeah, it's definitely definitely works in your favour. And, and 
it's it, we discussed with Fergie last week. It's like sometimes you just need a little bit of luck as well. Mm. If you're going to win this, you're going to finish really high up. You, there's little things that have to win your favour, and and um, yeah, that's one of them. You sat there nice with quite a few transfers in your top side now, with uh, <laughs> that game being postponed. But yeah. I think all three pod teams have done all right this week. Um, yeah. It makes a change. We're usually talking about fours and elevens, aren't we? And, <laughs> and not much else. Um, but yeah, it's good to see. Good to see that we're and all we've in. all got teams in the top one K now. Yeah, which is which is a, a nice uh, a nice touch. Hopefully build, build, build and like you, like you say, I've there's still plenty of time. I know we've discussed it on the Discord group, haven't we, about like um you can have a, a rotten run of luck and still there's, there's t- teams that you might have outside that might be 10k, 15k. It's still got chances. You can still get them up there. Like there's there's still a lot of a lot of football to be played. There's how many how many postponements has there been that need rearranging? There's so many fo- so many games of football that need playing. Uh, FA Cup obviously just kicking off and all Champions League to come back on. So anybody who's um a little, falling a little bit behind or anything like that. Don't be dis- too disheartened. Um, there's plenty of time to to get yourself back up there. Right. Into the listener questions. Uh, we got Mikey W one. With this month being a short one, I plan to use my transfers to get my team prepped for February. Which team should we be targeting targeting for fe- February's fixtures? Cheers, lads. Uh, ben. What do you reckon, mate? Um, I think um, Man City. I'll be looking at Man City next month. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Ooh, Leicester, yeah. Liverpool and Spurs. Um, yeah. Obviously, Chelsea are away at the Club World Cup and they've only got three games after they go away when they come back. So, they've got one. I think they'll have the FA, FA Cup game first and then they go away. So that'll only be a single game day. But who are they playing again? Wait, ooh, Plymouth, yeah. So you got Plymouth in the cup, aren't they? Yeah. And then, then they're, they're away, away at the Club World Cup. Mm. Yeah, and then they've got we've got three before it end. So weirdly, weirdly looking at the fixture ticker, is that Chelsea are gonna go away uh to a Club World Cup, come back, they're still gonna have four games in the month. Four games in the month. Arsenal three. <clears throat> So, yeah, sorry, three after yeah. the Plymouth game. Yeah. Um, Arsenal across the f- month of February, now they're out of the cup, are going to have two games. Now, whether there's some postponements to throw in the middle of there or, or something they've got, but at this moment in time, they've only got two games on that ticker. They've got Wolves and Brentford. Um, yeah, they've got two games to arrange. So you'd like to think that they'd be getting thrown in there somewhere, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, one to keep an eye on, though. Uh, anybody with Arsenal assets, they might might get tripped up there. Not many games. Might be time to come off. Yeah. Exit, exit. What do you reckon, James? A couple of teams. Well, funny enough, I, I had exactly the same teams as Ben written down. Yeah. Um, I also made a note that City have got seven fixtures at the moment. Leicester have got eight fixtures, um, which is more than anyone else. Uh, Liverpool got six. And Spurs have got six. Um, obviously, yeah, you need to. I think you need to get rid of your Chelsea assets for that for those blanks, and then maybe get a, have a plan to bring them back in. Um, would be the ideal thing, wouldn't it? Bring bring your Chelsea assets back in on the nineteenth of Feb if you can, because they've got Crystal Palace, Lille, Leicester, Bur- Burnley after that, which is not a bad run. Yeah. Um, so it's probably worth trying to keep some transfers back to. Uh, <clears throat> jump straight back on them because a lot of people will burn their transfers early in the month, yeah. and um, end up. Well, there's, there's a couple of you can you could potentially get a bit of a head start there with three. If you can get them back in on the nineteenth, you've got three games they play. Um, so I'd be that's what I I think I'm going to be looking to do if I can. Yeah, I, I, just to, just to add on to that as well, James. You obviously come back from World, World, the Club World Cup, Crystal Palace, Lille, Leicester. Burnley after that. Then we've got Newcastle and Lille, Norwich, Brentford, Southampton, <laughs> Leeds, West Ham, Everton, Wolves. Obviously, I mean, that's, that's a nice run of run. fixtures. 
Um, <laughs> that, that's through April just to start early May. Um, that's probably one of the trains you're going to want to be on. Um, but yeah, speaking purely for February, um, City, <laughs> Fulham, Brentford, Norwich, uh, Sporting, Tottenham, Everton. I think that's the uh, that's the that's the train for February. Leicester, obviously, having they're, they're maximizing fixtures now. They've just had another post moment. Yeah, there's 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 nowhere to fit it in in February. No, they would not be able to fit it in anywhere in February at all. So that would probably go into midweek, early March, I guess maybe or um, <clears throat> if they don't get through. If they don't get through against Rain, well, Randy. yeah, it's true because then that that swallows them up as well. So I mean, you're going to be looking at Leicester's probably going to be playing uh, weekend midweek, two games every week for the foreseeable, all the way through to even April. Just don't buy Leicester defenders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, they look good going forward, just uh, to stay away from the uh, the back line. But yeah, it it makes them. Them Leicester midfielders, uh, Madison Barnes, even Luckman, who's who's racking up the points here and there, yeah. now, is it? getting involved. Um, so it does make them look uh, pretty tasty. But whatever month you're talking about, I guess that even uh, Patson Dakar could become an option when he's back from injury, Ben. Yeah, because uh, Vardy's Excellent. out for a while, isn't he? Yeah, he's out for about four to eight weeks. Yeah. Um, Pats and Dacker should be back next week. So, mm. should be Want back for Burnley, so it'll be interesting. See if he gets straight back in the team. Realistically, though, would you would you use up one of your striker spots for Pats and Dakar? I suppose if you were chasing, you might. Or if one of if something happens to the top top guys, the Kane, your Salah, sorry, your Canes and your Ronaldo's, I suppose um, you might consider Pats and Dakar. I imagine he's cheap as chips. I, I probably would consider him. Yeah. He's he's mm. lethal finisher. Yeah. Mm. I like him a lot. He uh especially with this month we haven't got Salah, Mane, uh Mares. Obviously he's a midfielder, but um there's a li- little bit less options, isn't there? So f- from next mm. week if you've got fi- if you've got transfers, I'd look be looking at uh bringing Dakar in because he's got all them fixtures. No Vardy, Inacho's at African Cup of Nations. Got no yeah. one to play up front apart from they played Luckman up front on Saturday, and he did a mm. good job actually. But um, yeah. I suppose the the Afcon players are back uh, mid Feb, aren't they? So mm. maybe that's also I mean, I don't want... a spanner in. I suppose if Inacho's back, I don't want Salah to come back. <laughs> I think by going to... <laughs> I think he's mixed it. Up. <laughs> he's mixed it up. He's mixed it up, hasn't he? Like, yeah. Do, do we talk about like, obviously over years and stuff? You have like usually either an injury or there's something that goes on to one of the big players, and it just proper throws a spanner. It works and and it makes it, it mixes everything up. And I think Salah obviously going away has has gone to that. Oh, do you just do you go to four four two because now there seems more midfield options with the West Ham players and the Leicester players. Doing a little bit going forward, and and or do you bring in that third striker, take a punt on a player like Dakar? Or, or, it, it, it's mixed it all up. There's a lot more questions now, Salah's there because he was just a nailed, <laughs> cemented yeah. player in the team. Yeah. So, yeah, like you say, you want him back, don't you, for Liverpool's uh, cars? But I do, and Manny. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kate Kater can stay out there if she wants to. <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't bring um, Dakar into my team if I didn't have a lot of transfers, though. You know what mm. I mean? If, if yeah. I had loads of transfers, it's, it's worth a punt, mm. I think. With them fixtures coming up, mm. Burnley, Tottenham, Brighton, Forest, and then they play Liverpool, West Ham, Ra- Rangers, Rangers or Randers, what they're called. Randers. <laughs> Wolves, Randers. That gets harder then at the end of Feb. Yeah. But you've got the Randers games in midweek. And then they got Leeds, Arsenal in March, but that that's that's too far ahead with the COVID yeah. going on. We don't know <laughs> yeah. what's going to happen. There could be yeah. there could be all sorts all sorts going on by then, couldn't they? But yeah, for February it's uh, it's going to be an interesting month. There's, but for, yeah, City, City, Leicester, obviously with the quantity of games and 
City's quality of games. Like, yeah, it could that could be the month to be on them. And anybody, anybody who's got heavy City, uh, give you a shout, Lee Hooper. Anybody with heavy City, don't <laughs> uh, don't down tools yet because that could be a massive month, massive month. And a lot of people have moved away from City um, because of obviously they're only having a couple of couple of uh, couple of fixtures this month. So just a uh, just hold fire, hold fire. Um, yeah, good question. I enjoy that. Right, moving on. Andy Barnett. At the beginning of the season, everyone was talking about Sama, Ronaldo and Lukaku as being the Holy Trinity. Now with half the season gone and lots of info had, who would you say is the Holy Trinity? Or if you choose four at the back and four mids, which two would you choose? James, who you choose, mate? Well, um, <laughs> I would still say Salah, Ronaldo and Lukaku are the Holy Trinity, probably. Um no, I mean, um, you've got. I think you no, know, you've got to throw Kane in there. I would have Kane, <laughs> Kane over Lukaku. I think Kane seems more likely to get uh, star man. Well, it, historically, he has been a star man magnet, yeah. um, and you know he's going to play virtually every game. Um, yeah, so I would say Salah, Kane, Ronaldo would be my holy trinity. Um, I would, oh, sorry, just, if, if I would just go for it back. If it was two, I would say Salah and Kane, but maybe maybe Ronaldo on depending on fixtures. <laughs> well, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, how I I don't really understand the question. Is it like from now for the for the rest of the month, or is it for the whole season? Or I mean, what? for the rest of the season, I I presume. I, I'll I, I do a take on it and say let's let, let's say. Who do you think of the three strikers? So the whole of Trinity will be the three highest scoring strikers out of them all. <clears throat> right. Because, I mean, yeah, like you say, it depends on fixtures, this, that, over. But if we get to end of the season, who do you think is going to be, have probably scored the most? And he takes mm-hmm. the fixture equation out of it. The three I said, Salah, Kane, Ronaldo. Yeah. yeah Lukaku probably not far behind. Agree. Mm. Yeah. I think if, if there's ever a time to... Um, uh, I've dropped somebody out of your team and gone to four four two. It'd have been over the last month or so. Where mm. to, to be fair, Ronaldo's had some stick, but then I've looked at his dream team points and stuff, and he's still racking them points up. It's just here and obviously United are playing so crap mm. that it, he's mm. like it's the frustration of expecting him to haul and not, and United playing crap, and then you're like, right, he rid, went rid of Ronaldo, this is no good kind of thing. Yeah. And when I looked on his things, he, he's doing all right. Lukaku yeah. loves an interview with an uh, Italian press officer and, <laughs> and wants to talk about his love for Inter Milan. And, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a mess. So if, if we're going 4 4 2, it'd be Salah and Kane. I think they've served Dream Team players well over the last good few years, and I think they're reliable. I think Ronaldo and Lukaku, again, it's, it's, I think it's the same with any player when they come back over to Premier League or whatever, they come to a new team or a fresh team. You've got to, they've got to have time, haven't they? Um, so we'll see with that. But yeah, forced into a tr- whole trinity. I would uh, Salah Kane, definitely. It's a, it's a flip of a coin, Ronaldo or Lukaku. I'd, probably Ronaldo. <clears throat> he's one of the best ever and he's... He shits points. To be honest, he's he's still he's still doing it. So yeah, that that be mine. Right on to uh, Connor. Um, best defenders to own apart from Trent, Cancelo, and Robertson. Don't think we're a massive fan of defenders at the minute because there's not much not much clean sheets going around. But um, James, well. I wouldn't personally. I wouldn't be looking at too far away from Chelsea, Liverpool, and City for my defenders. Um, I the only other team I would consider at the moment is Spurs, uh, with uh, Conte coming back there, tightening them up. Honestly, you, no other no other sides are racking up clean sheets unless you want to consider uh, Wolves. <laughs> yeah, but they haven't got European fixtures, so. Um, so for me, it's from it's from those sides really, and then of course, obviously, 
Um, he said, well, aside from uh, Trent and Rob, Trent and Robertson, well, there's, I'm not sure I would, Vir- Virgil's too expensive. Matic yeah. doesn't play every game. So I, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I don't know if I would consider a third Liverpool defender uh, personally. Um, from Man City, Laporte's still relatively good. Well priced, he's playing most games. Might give him a go. Um, I still think Chelsea are, you know, I think they'll sort it out defensively, even though they've had injuries. Uh, I still think Alonso and Rudiger are good options. Obviously, not West there at the Club, Club World Cup. Um, yeah. I still think there's some good options at Chelsea, and I think they will come good. Right. Well, um, it, but if you had to pick a player right now to put in your team, Apart from them three, who would you pick <laughs> to go from the fixtures now? Well, it's a really difficult one because obviously you've got the Club World Cup with Chelsea. So, um, <clears throat> uh, Laporte, maybe? Maybe Regulon or Emerson Royale? Let's move that fixture ticker. Let's see. To end that season. Uh, so Chelsea have 20 games from now until the end of the season, according to the ticker. So City have That's 20 if games. they don't go through the next round and everything in the Cups. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that's not including all the Champions League and stuff, is it? Yeah, so they've still got plenty of fixtures, Chelsea. Mm. Rudiger. Rudiger. Um, he's always a threat. He's, he's a player, isn't he? Like I say, if you take do you take the uh, the block of Club World Cup out of there, and a little bit of a patchy form for Chelsea <laughs> defensively recently, um, I'm sh- I'm pretty sure they'll sort it out, and I think you might you might see before end of year, before end of season, sorry, um, quite a few clean sheets coming Chelsea's way. Um, I'm sure we'll be probably speaking about a Chelsea train defensively before the end of the season. Uh, I think they've got a, a lovely run of fixtures all the way through to end of year. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I, other than United from the end of fifth, Feb, yeah, yeah, to, like the end of Feb. You look at that run. I mean, West Ham, yeah, all right, that's a tricky game. West Ham, good side. United, who knows what <laughs> what United will turn up in at middle of May. Wolves but, are tricky uh, at the moment defensively. Yeah, Wolves. Yeah, they can't score though, can they? No, no. It's, it's, it's like there's nothing, nothing pops out of there and thinks, ah, yeah, Chelsea got a bit of a bad run. Mm. I tell you what, from 19th of February they've got a fucking lovely run, mm. a lovely run, and um, yeah, yeah. So I won't be like putting them on. I won't be putting them up, putting them on on an avoid list. Like, um, like what 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 uh, day is Reese James due back? Well, I've just checked that on the Premier Injury site, funnily enough. Hey, we're, um, on, we're on the same wavelength here. And um, the last update was um, New Year's Eve. It's a hamstring injury. And as always, you cannot rush these things. The image will come back later today. We'll know more after the scan. But it's currently got no return date, but a hamstring injury. It was a, sorry, a thigh injury. Yeah. Oh, hang on a second. It, sorry, it's a hamstring injury. Um, I think it was a bad one, but I would say what six six weeks, two months max for something like that. Yeah. Um, so so looking, he'll be back before the end of the season. So we're looking at him coming back just in the middle of their really good run of fixtures. I would think so, but um, clearly not a not a not a physio or a, or a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's one of them. Well, um, there's, there's going to be some options there, aren't there? Who, who would you go for, Ben? Big Virgil van Dijk, who I've yeah. just put in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's uh, he's sick from the defensive defenders uh, scoring. He hasn't even gone off yet, like done really well this season. And them fixtures for Liverpool are really good. Like Arsenal, Brentford, Arsenal, Crystal Palace, Cardiff, Leicester, Burnley... Into Norwich, West Ham, into Brighton. So the decent fixtures all the way through till yeah. like March. I think he's a good option, and he's he's always a threat in the box. Can always get your goal, star man. 
Good shout. Yeah, it's a good shout. <clears throat> I say Rudiger for me. Rudiger. I think he's he's always a threat. He loves going forward. He he, he has a pot shot from miles out. He's a danger in the box. He's he's a bit of an animal, Rudiger. As long as he doesn't, uh, before the end of January, sign a pre-contract agreement with somebody else <laughs> and go out completely off the boil. Um, yeah, I, th- I think he's still one of the, one of the main men to have. Um, interesting as well will be if um, with Chilwell, uh, obviously with the Chilwell injury, I'm not sure when he's due back either, but whether Chelsea signed somebody in, in January to help in that left-back spot, are they happy with Alonso there? Who knows? I think they were trying knows? to recall Emerson back from Lyon. Were they? But I don't think they can. <laughs> you, you... He, but he hardly ever played, did he? No. Uh, he, would, he wouldn't want to come back, would he? No. If you no, were Emerson, you might piss yeah. off. That fellow that played uh, Saturday from though looked all right, didn't he? Hall. Yeah, he looked decent. He's Got a couple of in there, isn't he? So. Yeah. You mustn't get too excited, apparently, according to yeah. Tuchel. So I'm just telling you, boys, don't oh, get too yeah. excited. He's only I, won't be, I won't be putting him in anyway. <laughs> I'm just saying he did all right. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, I've already emailed a uh, dream team to put him on the game. <laughs> on the game. <laughs> calm, I'll calm it down. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there you go. First I ain't putting no Ch- Chelsea defenders in until, like you say, end of February, me. And yeah, end of Feb, I'll tell you what. Looking <clears throat> lovely. Lovely. Uh, City train, down to Stamford Bridge and jump on Chelsea train. <laughs> what it's looking like. Uh, right. Um, Marty Beasley. That uh, should have covered yours. Ideal back four defenders. I think uh, Connor's mentioned three of them. Trent, Cancelo, Robertson. Obviously, Liverpool, probably some of the better fixtures. Uh, this month and that, and then we're probably throwing in some options there for your fourth defender. Well, is Trent out though? Oh, we could, so you we need another player. Oh. Yeah, we're hearing Trent's got COVID, haven't we? But he might have tested positive eight days ago. He might mm. be back for the next game. Yeah, they haven't no. played since they haven't played since last Sunday, have they? He's mm. only just he's only just tested positive. So, oh, right. Right. yeah, I, th- I I'm thinking maybe I should I did. I know Ben 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 made the move. I I'm too cautious with my transfers. I think sometimes, but um, you want him back in though, won't you? So you probably you do, well. That's the thing. I, yeah. If if it, if it was just a bit part player that I or enabler, I would have swapped him. No, no, yeah. no qualms at all. But yeah. I just couldn't bring myself to get rid of him because he's amazing. But yeah, um, I we'll fancied see, I Virgil suppose. for a I fancied Virgil for a goal and a clean sheet today. That's all. <laughs> and they've got the fixtures as well, so yeah, yeah, all pointed towards a decent swap that from, from Trent to Virgil. Yeah. I, I won't repeat what Ben put on the WhatsApp group <laughs> when uh, Shrewsbury scored. <laughs> it's uh, for a family podcast like ourselves. It's uh, it wouldn't be repeatable. Yeah, so true. Um, yeah, pack four. To be to be honest, mine. I wouldn't. I, I probably wouldn't have a back four. I'm, I, I was just going to have a quick look through my teams and see how many have a back four, but it, I don't think it's many. No, I, I've moved away to... I think most of my teams are back three now. It, yeah. it was definitely the right move earlier in the season. Yeah, Not, not at the moment, I think. Not at the moment until, like you say, that, the, the run for City in Feb is probably a, a good chance to jump on a back four and, and hope they can keep some of them some of the clean ones, and then same again uh, across to Chelsea at the end of Feb once they come back from the Club World Cup. That might be the time when we might start switching back when these bigger sides have got good runs, good uh, blocks of fixtures that they're going to have a good chance of keeping like three clean sheets out of five games and such. But at the minute, they just, I mean, what we're talking about Liverpool versus Shrewsbury, no clean sheet, Tottenham versus Morecambe, no clean sheet. Chelsea, Chesterfield, no clean sheet. Man City. <laughs> Man City, yeah, yeah. It happens, doesn't it? it happens every year. And we're, we're, all like, we're acting like we're surprised. <laughs> no surprise. <laughs> the, yeah. We have these little, these little uh, 
these guys, it's that it's their the big probably could be the biggest day of their lives, yeah. and they they'll do anything to mm. uh, to get that goal. Then they go from like conference league to I reckon most players raise their level by at least two divisions, don't they? Because they Definitely. know the cameras are on, and it's their yeah. their big chance. So uh, yeah, yeah, that it's adrenaline pumping all game. They'd be absolutely well up for it, won't they? Like you say, it's yeah. their complete cup final. Um, and that's the beauty of the cup. That's why I love the cup. And that's why when we get foreign managers coming over here <laughs> and telling us to cancel our cup games, <laughs> we won't go back into we're that. Not, we're not going back into that. <laughs> uh, there you go. What were you started? What were you started, boy? Right. Um, Daniel Moody. I own two Chelsea players and definitely want both of them after the Club World Cup. My options are ditch them both and then bring them back, which will take him four transfers. Ditch one and bring him back, which will be two transfers out of his pot. Or keep them both. What would you do? Now, I know you don't know the players. Obviously, the two Chelsea assets. I'd probably go with Rudiger, B1. And Lukaku. And I guess Lukaku or Mount, maybe. My yeah. Name. Um, yeah, what do you do, James? Well, ideally, you'd get rid of both of them, I would say. Um, I'm in the same same boat with some of my sides. Um, hopefully, you won't need those transfers for anything else. Because Chelsea, you know, as we've discussed earlier, they're going to be out. Um, uh, they're going to miss quite a few games. I think if you get rid, if you can you get rid of one um, with the January transfers, um, maybe right at the end of the month, and then you're only going to miss... Um, <laughs> The Plymouth game, um, yeah. which you know, whoever you're taking out, there's a good chance they won't play anyway. And then use one from February's transfers. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, appreciate it. it's actually if you think about it, it's four transfers. You take two out, two in, two out, sort of thing. But uh, you won't want them back until the 19th of February. So I think you've got to get rid of them. Yeah. Um, so I, I ideally get rid of two, but you know, if you've got to hang on to one, then it's not the end of the world, I suppose. And we got like Salah and Mares coming back from Afcon as well. Yeah, it's gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, uh, I'd be getting rid of them definitely. Get rid of them. Jump on Man City, Liverpool. They have three games while Chelsea are away, and then you can move back on to to uh, Chelsea for the Crystal Palace, Lille, Leicester, Burnley, Newcastle, Lille, Norwich, Brentford, Southampton, Leeds run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it sounds scary, doesn't it, when you, when you put it as ditch them and uh, using four transfers. Yeah, but we've got five a month, so it's two transfers out of this allowance. So you've got three to play with elsewhere. And then two transfers when they come, it's going to come out of your February allowance. When, like, like, like Ben just said, th- th- there's teams with three games in that space. You, you need to maximise the amount of games your players are playing. Like definitely, like you jump off them at a point where you feel comfortable jumping off them in January. That's fine. Like you say, like James said about missing the Plymouth game. Um, it's a very short month this month. Um, they've got the Plymouth game at the start of February, but then nothing. It's not worth holding them just to save your transfers. To do what? What you're going to do with those transfers? You're going to if you're going to if you're going to use them transfers on somebody else. You're probably going to move out a player that's probably actually going to be playing somewhere else, like whilst Chelsea aren't playing. So, I mean, yeah, so you're probably just leaving them for this month, aren't you? That mm. might be the time to move, actually, if you if you look at the ticker. So after the Spurs game, they've just got a break, haven't we? We've got the international break. Yeah. And the Plymouth game coming in on the weekend, the first weekend of February, where your February transfers will be back refreshed. So is it probably worth keeping your... If you've got your Chelsea assets now, you've got two double game weeks, haven't you? Including this week, yeah. Uh, sorry, you've got... Yeah, this game week being a double. You've got next game week, all right, they've got City and then Brighton <clears throat> as a double. Then they've got Tottenham and then everyone breaks away anyway. Yeah. So Chelsea's fixtures, they don't actually miss out now, do they? They've got they've got no. a maximum amount of fixtures from now till the twenty third, twenty second, wherever it is. 
Yeah, yeah so it, it, it's a a hold until after that Tottenham game. And and that'll probably give you a head start then as well, taking them out there. Obviously, you used two January transfers. Yeah, you've not lost out anywhere, have you? Yeah. I think that worked. Yeah, there you are, Daniel. Ditch them. Ditch them after the Spurs game. Unless, obviously, there's any COVID incidents and whatever in between. It's like a disclaimer, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's your advice. Something else case. comes up always. <laughs> yeah, in case, uh, in case something else jumps out. I've seen some people with seven seven injuries in the team at the start of the month this month. <sighs> That's like shocking. COVID, injuries, Salah away, Manny away, Mahrez away, Mendy away. And they can only do a certain amount. I've had some someone ask me what to do and obviously I had Mendy in goal. I said, well, just old Mendy because goalkeepers have only got a certain <clears> amount of uh, like a ceiling, haven't they? Like five, eight points, maybe 13 don't have to tell everyone that I messaged you for some advice, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. He, he's, he ended up changing all his outfield players today. Well, yesterday and today. <laughs> yeah. You can soon go, like you say, you end up in a situation like that. Um, COVID, injuries, and if you hadn't pre-planned for the, uh, for the AFCON, which I thought were going to get cancelled, mm. I'd... I, I was pretty certain it, it would, but it shows what I know about epi- epidemi- epidemiology, is it? <laughs> What's that, James? Epidemicology. Um, <laughs> epidemiologist. That's the one. I'm not one of them. <laughs> anyway, we'll move on. Kerry Jones. With this month being relatively short, my plan is to hold back a couple of transfers to use at the end of the month after the international break to bring back AFCON players and deal with any international injuries that may occur rather than use the February transfers. What are your thoughts? Thanks all. James? I think um, I think that's the ideal strategy, to be honest, and that's something I'm trying to do with my top team. Um, I'm not one to make punty transfers that have to be reversed the week after or the one after that. So uh, I think it makes sense to try and hold on to your transfers, like like you said. Yeah, definitely. Ben? Yeah, totally agree. If you've got no other fires to put out, yeah, hold your transfers if you can. Like you said about the punty ones, probably Lukaku was the puntiest one because we know we've got to take him back out at the end of the month. Um, He has five games before the end of the month, which is worth the punt, I thought, in the end. Yeah. Definitely when he's lining up against Chesterfield. Yeah, conference team. (laughs) Screwed the shit out of me. Definitely. Not sure I would be would have been bringing in Lacazette or somebody like that though. You know that's that's the real punty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, true. it's true. That that was probably for the well. What game was that for? Leeds was it a few weeks ago? Yeah. Uh, didn't Tony just bring in Lacazette? No, no that no, was I, a, it's differential. No. Lacazette's my differential. Oh, uh, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, it was Leeds and Sunderland, weren't it? That's when you brought him in. <laughs> I if do you have, had him in your um, team, I've got him in a few teams. From I do have him in my team. Yeah, he had Leeds, Sunderland, Norwich in a row. So. Yeah, yeah, he did. And he did all right. Yeah, he's not done. Yeah, he's not done too bad. I, because I, I obviously we have a bit of a an affection for Arsenal on this pod, and <laughs> and we we um I've always been avoid, avoiding putting him in, but um he got five against Leeds. He, well, so go further back, Southampton 8, you got West Ham 7, Leeds 5. He didn't play against Sunderland. Yeah. But then he got 10 against Norwich. Yeah. And obviously a blank against City, a blank against Forest. Um, but he's done his little bit. Um, but yeah, I am looking to definitely shift him on, especially looking at that fixture ticker as well. But yeah, Kerry, if you're, um, obviously, if you can afford to hold back a few transfers and plan for Feb, I mean, happy days, mate. I, that is the way to play it. It's definitely the way to play it. There's uh, no qualms about that. Um, but if you do have fires to put out now, there's still a few opportunities to to make a few moves if need be. Um, right, James has been on on Twitter. Uh, with so many big hitters missing, not performing, he has so much free money to spare. Uh, he's hoping we're in a similar situation. He, he's... 
on rank 1,247 pre the Forest Arsenal game with mm. 2.2 million in the bank. I'm pretty certain to say his rank didn't change a job, no matter <laughs> who he had, because that were, that were crap. Hey, I, I went at one place, 550th to 549th somehow. <laughs> well, did, that, did, um, did one of the Arsenal defenders get a yellow card? Martin Ellie got a yellow card. There you go. Yeah, maybe he had Martin Ellie, whoever Ooh. was a head above me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, James, uh, a similar situation. Yes, I am in a similar, similar situation. I think most people are. They've sold Salah and Mares probably because of AFCON. Um, but what I would say is that money will soon get eaten up when they come back. So yeah. don't get too complacent with all that money in the bank. And don't yeah. spend it because you're going to need it to bring those players back. Yeah. Ben? Yeah, well, the good thing is that our team value should be going up while Salah is away. And Salah will stay the same. Yeah. Mars will stay the same because they're not playing the value. So yeah, I think you should be able to afford them. But yeah, like James just said, try not try and keep an eye on it. Yeah, if you spread that out for your team, you're going to use two or three to try and get Salah back. You need to just leave it in your bank um, because it's it's not like Salah's going to come back and you go. Well, I don't know whether I don't know whether I put Salah back in or not yet. The fixtures don't look quite right or. He seems a little bit out of form. I don't think that uh, washes with Salah. I think it's just instantly. Salah's back, get him in. You've got to save that transfer, save that cash. Then it Which... goes back to being a 10-man game. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, we're all playing with 10 men. Um, but yeah. We've um, we've seen a few idle stories uh, across the seasons, haven't we, uh, on Dream Team? Um, we always stumble across them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we will give a shout out to Graham Payne, um, who tweeted tweeted earlier. In Boom or benched, Madison starting. That's a no brainer, right? <laughs> oh dear. Uh, and we all know how that ends. Graham Payne, I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think he's had enough uh been battered enough and you'll take the piss out of his name? <laughs> Well, to be fair, I do feel a bit bad now. Sorry, Graham. Uh, I feel for you with that one, mate. Matt and Buemo got 80, 80, 28 points this week. Um, well, Madison oh, got eight, so that that is a tough one. To be fair, I would question why Adam Buemo in your side in the first place, but um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> bad luck, mate. Yeah, that's a stinker. That's a tough one. Tough he's, one. To he's take, another man. one out the Adama Traore book, and he and Buemo. And then suddenly he's gone off he on is. one today. Uh, yes, he yesterday. is. He's a man that threatens so much and uh, <clears throat> often oh, fails to deliver. At least in Buemo hits 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 the woodwork. It's Adama's at the, <laughs> at Rose Head. Yeah, yeah. He's his framework at stadium. It's all about the XP kids. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Right, sorry, <clears throat> sorry, Graham. Sorry to bring that up. We did just stumble across it on. Uh, it's, it's it shows there's some fucking arse luck in this game, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Arse luck. Uh, well, I mean, to be fair, Madison could have got sent off. It could have been worse. So, <laughs> right, DT Patrick. Who do you think are the best differential picks for February? James will jump across to you for your best <laughs> differentials, man. Well, the question came in quite late, so I haven't had a time, too much time to think about it. But I did, I did think Dakar, which I mentioned earlier, Patson Dakar yeah. might yeah. be a good one for because with Leicester's fixtures, um, you know, uh, good show. looking good. So yeah, um, what do you think, Ben? Have you got any any thoughts on best differentials? Well. Um... Leicester players, I was thinking that yeah. even Madison now he's only eleven point six percent, and mm. they've got loads of games to play in February, and they've got but the Everton game postponed. We've got three games to be rearranged. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also, Man City players, Laporte he's only five point one percent, and Mares is ten percent when he comes back. I mm. don't know; he'll, he'll probably get bought back up, like, but. He could be one. He could go mad. 
six point nine million Mares now, and then when I took him out, I was like, God, has he really got that high? Wow. Um, wow. It's a lot of money, but too, he's too much money because he, he wasn't even playing. Yeah, but he's still top of the midfield rankings, isn't he? I know. Yeah. I know. I know. It's just too much at six point nine million for someone who's you're waiting to. Like, I know, obviously, after Foden and Grealish had the little um, party or whatever, <laughs> Mares obviously started starting a few more games. But fucking hell, six point nine million. Yeah, and you're not, you're not going to bring him back. You're not going to bring him in then, Tony, at that price. Probably won't be able to fit him in, will you? <sighs> I struggle. <laughs> I struggle. I mean, that's mid February, so we don't know what's going to go on be before then. But I mean, I'm definitely swayed. So the Leicester, if you want to talk about a differential, uh, a double up on the Leicester midfield for me, mm. I think Madison and then add either Barnes or Luckman into that. Tillemans. Fo- or Tillemans, penalties. <laughs> Some penalties, yeah. Yeah. I was discussing it. We were there, we were discussing it in the Discord, weren't we? Yeah. Barnes, Madison. And obviously, Mad- uh, Tillemans has had a shout here and there, but penalties. Sometimes they speak, don't they? <clears throat> and uh, yeah, a little double up there would have seven fixtures in February. Seven. I think seven. Ash Ash got on the double up, didn't he? He got Tillemans and um, Madison, and yeah. uh, Andy got uh, Luckman in. Yeah. Yeah, and I think he got Madison as well. No and... love for um, Old Brighton. No, <laughs> playing right back. He got star man though, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, because he, he got a goal at the end. He got star yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, he played with uh, all Brighton right back. Chowdhury, he's the next Mascherano now. Centre back. <laughs> That's what uh, um, Brendan Rodgers is calling him, Mascherano. Really? Played amazing. Played amazing. When I watched the highlights back, he he looked unbelievable. Wow. He was like, you know, like say the, the striker was going through with the ball. He, he was tr- getting back and then just sliding in and taking the ball like proper old fashioned mm. slide tackle. Yeah, last ditch tackles. He look and he looked so mm. good on the ball with the game in front of him instead of being in the midfield. Yeah, he looked. Mascarano really good. was was the master at that. Um, yeah. I was gutted when he left Liverpool. Absolutely mm. gutted. Great player. Loved him. Yeah, he was. He was brilliant. Yeah, uh, and then he had Festergaard centre half, which. I won't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he needs Bednarak next to him, doesn't he? That's what That's he needs. That's right, he needs he's there. If we didn't have any other players, I'd, I'd, oh, he's awful. I can't believe we signed him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know he looked so good at Southampton as well? He did uh, for what, a what point. Have Leicester done, what have Leicester done to him? He did for a point at Southampton. I think he had a little goal spree, didn't he, at last season? He scored a few yeah. goals. Mm. Um, and then we played a right back at left back as well, Von, the Vonte Campbell, who plays in the twenty uh, threes. So if it makes um, yeah. if it makes you feel any better, Ben, it's not just Leicester that make these kind of mistakes. Um, Liverpool bought Lovren, and he wasn't exactly. Uh, a, he's not as bad as Bednarek. But, uh, sorry, as uh, Vestergaard. But um, mm-hmm. I always thought we bought the wrong centre back. Jo- mm-hmm. Jose Jose Font was the man. Yeah. Without him. Next to him, so I think if you're going to go in and get your get your Southampton centre backs, you need both of them. Yeah, well, buy did, one get one free. Sure, you did, you did go, go back and get ball. one from Southampton, didn't you? When you got Van Dyke. Well, we did, and, uh, and I was Klein. Happy with that one to be and fair. Klein, Klein as well, and Lallana, <laughs> and Lallana. Who yeah, else? You... <laughs> was like whole Southampton team, man. It. <laughs> well, we, we've moved on from uh, raiding Southampton now. We, it's we've left all the slim pickings to uh, to Leicester, and you, and you started to yeah. sell the shite back we've to them. Picked over you? the carcass. You started you know. to sell sellings back to them. Start <laughs> selling the shite that back that way. Let's, let's send it, <laughs> send it the other way. Ah, oh, quality. Right. Uh, another from uh, DT Patrick. Any thoughts on targeting those FA Cup fourth round fixtures? Um, I don't think the inks dry on them. Um, than the fixtures <laughs> yet, but let's have a gander. We've got the drawing full. Um, James, any any that jump out to you, mate? Well, uh, thank, thanks for the for that one at the last second, Patrick. When the uh, when the draw was only made like uh, an hour or two ago. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, West Ham versus away to Kidderminster could be good. Um, so you only really want to be bringing in players that you've got a chance of keeping for a bit longer. So. I yeah. think um, 
So obviously your Bowen and your Antonio's, possibly your Lanzini's for that one. Um, and Liverpool got Cardiff, I noticed. So um, your usual suspects, suspects there. Um, when's the fourth round? Is it the beginning of Feb, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. right at the start. Yeah, so Salah, might, Salah Mane probably won't be around back by then. So I don't know, you You'd probably be looking at getting if if you've got rid of, rid of Trent, you'd probably want him back for that game. Um, saying that, will he play? That's the trouble with Liverpool um, and uh, FA Cup fixtures. I would be very wary about. Yeah, I would want to see the team sheet first because yeah. um, I'm certainly and Cardiff aren't. You know, they're they're only in the the, the one division below, so I'm not sure. Um, by all means. If you want that Liverpool player anyway, and you get the extra fixture, happy days. If you've seen the team sheet, team sheet, but but just be a bit wary of that one. I think. Uh, have you got any Ben? Have you looked at the list? Yeah, and uh, we, we got a. Obviously, we don't know the uh, the order of the games. What what yeah, time the games important. are on at? That that'll be a bit of a bigger factor. Um, yeah. yeah, you've got a Liverpool West Ham. You said. Man City Fulham, that's a big one. I think we've got to be targeting that one. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I think Fulham will play, play a second string, though. They're challenging at top of uh, the championship. I don't think they really give much Yeah. Give much time yeah. to this. And why would they want to send out a, their strongest 11 to go and get probably beat by a couple at City? They might as well just send out the second string and just, just uh, give up on the FA Cup, to be fair. There's bigger fish to fry for them. Mm. Yeah, I mean, as a Rovers fan, I hope they put out the first 11 to get a couple of sendings off, a couple of injuries. And, um, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? But I, I can't see Fulham doing that. So I can I see that being a bit of a bit of a five or six nil of that. Mm. So one to target, yeah. And obviously, we won't, we won't, obviously Chelsea's got Plymouth, but they haven't got a double game week that week because they're going away for the, after the World Cup. Yeah. So probably won't be, uh, targeting any Chelsea players there I think those three fixtures like West Ham Liverpool City because you're probably got, if you're going to want somebody for that month as well mm. especially City who have got a favourable month anyway I think they're the ones to target aren't they you need to look beyond that game so say if, you're, if you don't have Yotta and Yotta starts for Liverpool he's a good option he's a good option then moving forward into February as well but yeah, there are Patrick. Um, right, let's move on to the uh, mini league top ten, which I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to put it in. Um, <laughs> let's move on to the mini league top ten, and I will. I'll read it out. Um, obviously, it's a late one this uh, this evening, so. Oh, top 10. Are we doing top 11? Mm. <laughs> I, I think we've been a double ninth. I think we'll do a top 11 here. So there is sat there in 11th is uh, our very own James Fricker. In um, joint ninth, we've got uh, Daytona, Matt Westwood, and Grogs United, Kerry Jones, uh, joint ninth. Eighth, Sir Alex FC, Alex Cole. In seventh, Goldie Oakin. Kane. Kane. Kerry Jones. Uh, in sixth, Henry Cartridge with Winging It. In fifth, Heath Robson with Penenka FC. In fourth, Braveheart, Jonathan Parrott. In third, Fergie's on the climb, isn't he? He's had a Fergie good Fergie time. He has 61 points. Andrew Ferguson up there to third in the bronze medal position so far. Second, Dan Sherwood with Gold Hunting. And top of the lot. Uh, this week is uh, Sir Alex FC, uh, Alex, well, Sir Alex FC 2, Alex Cole. Um, it's getting really competitive there. It's good league. Um, I f- that was game week 19, weren't it? So next week is the <clears throat> is the cash week yeah. in the tight league. So £50 the best score for next week's. Next week's um, winner. Right. Ins, outs, and 1K. James, first up with the top 1K ownership. So the most owned players within the top 1K ownership, probably better off 
taking your mic off mute. Yep, so I'm in uh, <laughs> top spot. We've got Bernardo Silva with 86%, uh, Cancelo with 79%, Alexander Arnold with 76 Ronaldo with 61 and Kevin De Bruyne with 55%. Quite interesting because I've been looking at the top 100 ownership for the After Hours pod. So if anyone's interested in that, uh, there's a few interesting insights in that we'll be covering that one uh in the after hours pod yeah good stuff anybody surprising you there Ben, top 1k gabriel jesus just nipped in there 16 percent yeah that must have been a punt because of uh, he was in the starting lineup on friday yeah yeah but one goal and a penalty miss <laughs> oh so bad <laughs> bad you got luck the... Reese James is on that list. It's 230 teams in the top 1K to have Reese James. Mm, that's interesting. Um, and probably like me, 266 teams still have Edward Mendy. I can understand that one. Yeah, because you don't want to, if you've got other fires to put out, yeah. you're not going to touch your keeper, are you? No. But the Reese James one, knowing he's a long term injury, Interesting, and he's a lot of money. Yeah. It's not, yeah. It's not like you sat there as an enabler. I think it's 5.9 million. I think a few FPL players have gone to sleep this week and just forgot that there's FA Cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. I can't believe Harry Kane is only 35% owned. I think yeah. that's very low. Um, it's a lot higher in the in the top 100, 100 I can tell you. He's he's in my best team, and that's why I think I've, I've shot up as well. Yeah, I'm mine. Uh, I'm mine. Uh, Harry Tim for him to get up, bitch. <laughs> get on. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry, um, it's time. And then he missed an absolute sitter. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, interesting. If he scored that goal, that would have been an extra, f- what, 13 points? No. Yeah, extra 10. 15 points, 15 points. 10? Goal and star man, he'd have probably stole, wouldn't he? Yeah, you're right, yeah. 18 points, it would have been 10 points more, yeah. Total, yeah. Not bad. It yeah. would have been better. And then this is interesting then. So, we look at that percentage of the top 1K. <laughs> The latest ins, so the most transferred in the last week is Harry Kane with Ooh. forty thousand transfers in. So that's not within the top top lot, top echelons of the. Uh, it's that's from from below. So it's an interesting one. Uh, another interesting one here: Yotta at thirty eight thousand. I mean, to be fair, Liverpool have got the tra- uh, they've got the uh, fixtures, but I don't know. It, it, Trying to steal a march for those extra ones, I think is. Yeah. This what, is from this is from the second though, isn't it? So, it was when they played Chelsea. That they that's played true. Chelsea on the second, so that that might be when they brought him in. That's true. Yeah, good point. Good points. So he won't know whether he was going to play or not. Not today. Um, De Bruyne third, with uh, twenty thousand transfers in. Um, Cancelo fourth. 13,000 transfers in. And Lukaku, with 12,500 transfers in, he's off the naughty step. Yeah. He's, uh, and he's back into the side. Played 45 against Chesterfield. Uh, obviously rested, so we're probably going to see him starting midweek as well. Um, mm. Yeah, any surprises on there, on the most transferred in? Well, just, just below Lukaku is, is Jesus, which is um, also 12,000 transfers in. So, so that you... Like you said, that was that was twelve and a half thousand people punting on that Swindon fixture. Yeah, 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 definitely. And you could all blame them, do you? I mean, they they went pretty strong City, and you could you could have seen it being an absolute massacre. And <clears throat> Jesus could have filled his boots. To be fair, he could have had a decent haul, mm. but missing a penalty doesn't help. Firmino's on there as well. Yeah, five thousand right at the bottom, uh, and that was before they. That must have been before they knew. Well, he he came off the bench today and he got a goal, but uh, uh, there was no way that you could have known that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, people. I suppose people. I suppose a lot of maybe some ca- more casual players go think. Well, Firmino, Salo, and Manny have gone. Firmino's go- definitely going to play, but uh, he's only just come back from injury, so. Yeah. Cheeky finish yeah. finish today, eh? 
Very nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. back heel. Mm. You can you can tell there's not enough people listening to the podcast because Bowen isn't on that list. Yeah. And I think of, obviously Madison's a, one player, obviously, ah. the West Ham midfield, Bowen. Mm. Will he be on there tomorrow, though? Uh, let me see. Ramsdale's a bit a big one as well. What I don't know why anyone would bring him in. <laughs> With them fixtures yeah. that Arsenal's got. Yeah, at three point three million. Yeah. Six and a half thousand transfers in. That must have been a Mendy to Ramsdale or something like that. Yeah. But then like you say with the fixtures, he's probably not the the go to man, is he? No. I wouldn't have said so anyway, but could be proven wrong. Latest outs, Ben? Yep. Of course, the main man, King of Africa, hopefully. Yeah. 97%, uh, 97,000 transferred him out. 8.2 million to mess about in your team. Uh, Reese James, 28,000 transferred out. Mane, 25,000 transfers out. Mendy, 25,100 transfers out. Uh, Mares, 19,000 transfers out. Yeah, all the AFCON lot. And yeah. then James, obviously, with his long term injury. Um, Sancho's on there with 4,000 out. Gallagher. Come back, didn't he, this weekend? He did. He did. Played well as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's not much surprising on there, is he, really? Townsend scored. <laughs> Townsend, yeah. I just, <laughs> He's I was on just there. about to say that. Townsend is there. Uh, Comes off the bench. Fernandez, 12,000 12, transfers out for Fernandez. I think he starts tomorrow. I mm-hmm. took him out of my uh, pod team as well. I could probably be burnt by that, but we shall see. Right. Um, obviously, we tidied the differential league up after a few weeks and uh, we'll let it get going. I know that the, uh, the community had a decent start with Bowen, getting a, a star man for him. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll, uh, we'll 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 brush up on that in next next uh, next couple of weeks. Um, what about Tillemans for me? I finally got some points. I, I, mean, well, I weren't gonna I weren't gonna mention that. <laughs> I've got to take <laughs> no, it all. No, cracking, yeah, good shout. I say penalties. Yeah. And he, he steady away on penalties, isn't he? He's not just that; he's a goal threat anyway. He's a yeah. good player, Tillemans. Um, is he not a bit of a seven racing whore as well? Yeah, I mean because he does everything, doesn't he? He's, he must be great for the uh, for the Matrix. Dennis, your shout, James. Oh, the less said about that, the better. Uh, wow! Well, hopefully, he'll come back in the next game. Hopefully, he'll come back in the next game. He's got some. So he's got some plum fixtures. Uh, it's got Norwich, I think, and uh, Leeds. So. I'm hoping for a few goals from a, from a, from old Dennis. Yeah, good shout. And like Fer- a... Fergie got eight for Mora, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Snuck that one in. Um, and I got zero for Laka. But we uh, we pull on. Right, if you've not been across the the uh, website yet, dreamteamtonic.com. Uh, Connor's Dream Team blogs on there, and Steve's Fancy Football blog, uh, Sky Fancy Football blogs on there, and Mike's Fan Team blog. Um, again, you're going to show your support to the to the lads, um, to me, Ben and James, and and get involved in our community. Then, if you go across to Patreon.com forward slash Dream Team Tonic, um, you'll, you'll you'll find us on there. You'll all the infos on there, all the extras you can get by just uh, showing a little bit of support for us and. And all we do, hopefully we're helping you out. Hopefully we're helping you win some of your mini leagues and, and pushing you higher up into the the overall rank. Um, your support is appreciated. And thanks to everyone who's already signed up. Um, that's it from us. Um, obviously, we'll be off to record the after, after hours pod uh, after we get a few gin and tonics from the bar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and yeah, good luck. Good luck for the rest of, uh, rest of this week. And we will speak to you next week. Uh, 
hopefully we're all in even better positions. So cheers, lads. Cheers, Tony. Cheers. cheers.